Thank you for choosing the 10 by 10 Meridian Pavilion from Yardistry. We're confident you'll find the assembly straightforward as long as you work through each step in the manual. In addition, this helpful hints video offers tips and tricks that we've learned along the way for handling some of the more critical steps. Step 1. Inventory. Before beginning assembly, sort your inventory by laying out each of the wood parts and hardware on the ground. Then, using the stamps or marked reference numbers, take a few minutes to cross-reference each one with the list in the assembly manual. Remember, we are always here to help. Contact us if you find a part that is damaged or missing. Take a moment to record the carton ID stamp for each box that you receive. There is a space on page 12 of your manual to write down the first five digits that come before 14459 and also the letter at the end. Step 2. Post Assemblies In Step 2, when installing the post mounts to the bottom of the posts, keep the bolts loose. Place and attach a plinth on each side of the post so it is flush to the bottom and sides, then secure the post mounts tight to the bottom and inside edge of the posts with screws. It's okay to install the screws on the inside of the posts on an angle. Once secured, go back and tighten the bolts. Step 3. Gable Beam Assembly It is best to complete Step 3 on a flat and solid raised surface with a helper. Place two gable beams tight together so the notches interlock. Insert one T-nut into one of the gable beams along the edge that has the gusset holes, as shown here. Next, place a T-nut in the center hole on the gable inside and flip it over. Flip the gable beam assembly on top of the gable inside, then place the gable upright on top of that. Square to make sure the gable upright is aligned properly before tightening the bolts. Once the assembly is square, have your helper hold everything in place while you secure with bolts. Once it is secured, flip the entire assembly back over. Make sure the top of the gable inside is flush to the top of the gable beams and attach with wood screws. To complete the assembly, place and secure a gable end tight to each end of the gable inside and flush to the top of the gable beams. Step 4. Side Beam Assembly Part 1 Continue to work on a flat and solid raised surface. Insert two T-nuts into one of the side beam outsides, as shown here, then flip the board over so the T-nuts are flat on the table. Place another side beam outside on top of the first one so the notches fit tight together. When attaching the bolts, have a helper look down the beams to make sure the boards are flush. Next, install two T-nuts into a side beam end and another two into a side beam inside. Flip both boards over and interlock the notch of the side beam end with T-nuts to the notch on the end of the side beam inside without T-nuts. Make sure the edges are flush and the boards are tight together, then secure with bolts. Place a side beam end without T-nuts onto the other end of the side beam inside. Again, so the notches interlock, the edges of the boards are flush, and the boards are tight together. Secure with bolts. Step 4. Side Beam Assembly Part 2 Place one outside beam assembly and one inside beam assembly together so the bolt holes line up and the T-nuts fit flat together. If there is a gap between the boards, or if the gusset holes don't line up, flip one board around. Insert long bolts into a few of the holes on the assembly to help keep the boards aligned. Then, make sure the ends and edges of the beam assemblies are flush. Once everything is aligned properly, secure with screws. Step 5. Frame Assembly You'll need four people and two ladders to complete this step, and it should be done in the final location of the structure. Stand two posts up and have helpers hold them in place while another two people lift one side beam assembly into place. In the correct position, the side beam assembly will be flush to the top and sides of the posts and the gusset holes will be along the bottom edge. If they aren't, rotate the side beam assembly before positioning it against the top of the two posts. Again, make sure it is flush to the top and sides of the post, then secure it to each post using one hex bolt per side. While one person remains holding the side frame assembly, have a second person stand another post. The remaining two people should lift one gable beam assembly into place so the gable inside faces inside the pavilion, and the gusset holes are along the bottom of the gable beam. 
The beam should be flush to the top of both posts. The one end should be flush to the edge of the side beam assembly, while the other should overhang the posts. When in place, attach the gable beam to each post using one hex bolt per side. Repeat to install a second side beam assembly and a second gable beam assembly. When you're done assembling the frame, check each of the measurements listed on page 17 of your instruction manual. The structure should measure 11 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches diagonally between posts in both directions. Along the front and back of the pavilion, it should measure 8 feet 8 inches from the outside edge of each post. The sides should measure 9 feet 6 and a half inches from the outer edge of each post. The posts and beam assemblies should be square and level. Use your foot to gently kick the posts and make any necessary adjustments. When you're sure all measurements are correct, use leg screws to secure each post. Step 6. Attach gussets. Before installing each gusset, check again to make sure the posts and beam are square. Then have a helper hold the gusset in place so it is tight to the beam and post. Attach it to the beam with two hex bolts. Pre-drill through the holes on the post and attach it with leg screws. Step 7. Roof Panel Frame Part 1 Step 7 should be done on a raised surface that is flat and stable. It is crucial that you keep everything square and flush throughout this step to ensure the roof panels fit properly. Lay down the first three rafters so the notches face up. Now position a strap short so that it fits into the notches at the bottom of the panel. If the end of the strap doesn't fit in the groove on the outside rafter, rotate it so it is flush to the outside edge of the outside rafter and the end with the short notch is centered on the third rafter. Place a strap long, then another strap short in the same manner. Make sure the assembly is square as you pre-drill the holes along the bottom of the rafters using the pilot holes in the strap short as a guide. The holes on the third rafter should be drilled at an angle. Next, secure all the straps. Don't forget to check that each joint is square before securing and to follow the pilot holes. The screws on the inside end of each strap will be installed at an angle. Now position a rafter top on the angled end of the rafters so the outside edge is flush to the outer rafter and the top edge of the rafter top is flush to the top edge of the rafters. Have a helper hold the board in place, making sure each rafter is centered over the pilot holes while you secure with screws. Step 7. Roof Panel Frame Part 2 Lay out the next three rafters the same way as before, with the notches facing up. Place a strap short on the rafters so the notches fit together, the larger notch is at the outside rafter, and it fits tight to the strap long that was previously installed. Next, place two strap longs on the rafters so the notches interlock, the larger notch is at the outside rafter, and they fit tight to the previously installed strap shorts. Secure the three straps as you did previously. Remember to check that each joint is square before securing, pre-drill the holes along the bottom of the rafters, and follow the pilot holes to install the screws where the straps meet on an angle. Now position a rafter top on the angled end of the rafters so the outside edge is flush to the outer rafter and the top edge of the rafter top is flush to the top edge of the rafters. Have a helper hold the board in place, making sure each rafter is centered over the pilot holes while you secure with screws. To make sure the entire frame is square, measure diagonally across the frame in both directions. It should measure 132 and a half inches from corner to corner each way. If it is not, remove one screw from each joint, adjust the entire assembly so it is square, then reattach the screws. Once the frame is square, complete the assembly by placing a rafter brace between the center rafters and against the rafter tops. Insert long bolts through the holes in the rafter brace and rafter tops to make sure the holes are aligned. Have a helper hold the rafter tops tight together and the brace flush to the top of the rafter tops. Then, secure with screws. Step 8. Attach roof panels. Gloves are essential for this part of the assembly because the roofing material can have sharp edges. To prevent scuffing, remove the clear and blue plastic from both sides of the aluminum panels right before assembly. If you are using a power tool, be careful not to over-tighten the screws. We recommend hand-tightening the screws until they are snug. Step 8 should be done on a flat and solid raised surface. 
Start by placing a side panel on one end of the frame assembly. Next place the two main panels so the ribs overlap followed by the second side panel. In the correct position, the holes next to the ribs will be along the top of the frame assembly and the panels will be flush to the top of the frame assembly and have a slight overhang along the bottom. The two side panels will also be flush to the sides of the frame assembly. It is okay if they aren't quite flush, however, they cannot overhang. When all panels are aligned, secure with nine roofing screws where shown here and on page 26 of the instruction manual. Step 8. Attach roof panels, parts 2 to 4. Position a roof edge left and roof edge right along the bottom of the panel assembly. Make sure the ends meet tight in the center, secure the three middle screws, then work your way from each end inwards. Next, finish securing the panels with roofing screws. To complete the panel assembly, peel away a small portion of the backing on the strip of weather seal, then begin attaching it to the rounded bottom of the ridge clips. When you're done applying the weather seal, attach the ridge clip 15s to the top of the panel assembly at each side so that it aligns with the angle of the rafter top and is flush with the side. Take care not to push down on the ridge clip. The bottom of the clip should be 2 and 3 quarter inches from the bottom of the ridge top. When in position, attach it with screws. Place the ridge clip in between both ridge clip 15s. Again, place it so it aligns with the angle of the rafter tops and so the bottom of it is 2 and 3 quarter inches from the bottom of the ridge top. Then, secure with screws. Step 9. Attach roof panels to frame. Do not attempt step 9 in windy conditions. You'll need 4 people and 3 ladders for this step. Position one ladder in the middle of the pavilion and the other two on either side of the side beam. Designate one person to remain in the middle throughout this step. Have two people lift the first roof panel up and pass it over the beam to the two people inside the assembly. When in place, the notches on the rafters should be tight to the beam and the rafter tops should be flush to the outside of the gable uprights. Lift a second panel up in the same way. Have the person in the middle of the assembly push up on the panels to help find the right fit while others push in on the sides of the panels. From inside the assembly, attach the two roof panels together through the rafter brace and rafter tops. Next, loosely attach a rafter beam bracket to each center rafter with a hex bolt. While one person pushes up on the center of the roof and another pushes in from the outside of the panel, make sure the notches in the rafters fit tight to the beam then secure the rafter beam bracket to the side beam assembly and rafter with screws before you tighten the bolts. Step 10. Attach ridge caps. Make sure you remove the film from both sides of the ridge caps before you install them in step 10. Slide the ridge cap over the ridge clips so it is roughly centered. Then slide on a ridge cap short on either end so the swaged end fits under the ridge cap and the ends are flush to the edge of the roof. Secure each with screws. Step 11. Attach gable ends. Have a helper hold a fascia board so the bottom edge is one inch below the rafter and the peak lines up with the peak of the roof. When in place, secure with wood screws. Repeat to install the rest of the fascias. Step 12. Attach gable gussets. From inside the assembly, place a gable gusset tight to each side of the gable upright. The gable gusset should be resting on the fascia and tight and flush to the rafter. When in place, secure with screws. Step 13. Truss assemblies. Place a tie wrap bracket to each end of a tie so it fits tightly. Attach the bracket with one pan screw through the hole that is closer to the middle of the tie. Inside the gazebo, get a helper to hold the tie in place between two rafters so that it is level. Attach the tie bracket to each rafter with the appropriate hardware. Pre-drill through the other hole on the bottom of the tie wrap bracket before attaching it with a pan screw. 